Hey guys, I'm Rob and welcome back to Rob's Model Cars. Today's video I'm going to explain in great depth about using automotive 2K paints on your model cars or whatever other models you like to build. Now there's a couple of reasons why I use automotive 2K paints. The first reason is accuracy of colour. Um, when you get these paints mixed up at your automotive paint supplier, they are mixing them up to the exact color code of the manufacturer. So whether it's Lamborghini, Ferrari, or even Ford paint colors, these paints are mixed up to the exact paint code uh, by the manufacturer. So that is one of the main reasons why I use automotive paints. The second reason is it gives you a lot more versatility to play around with colors, uh, to add and mix up your own shades, uh, use different base coat colors to change the color or the effect of the paint color that you're painting. Uh, and the third reason is automotive 2K clear coat. Now, 2K clear coat is just so far superior above uh, hobby style clear coats for hobby paints um, that I've been painting models in automotive 2K for years and I could never go back to hobby paints because the clear coat just is nowhere near as glossy or has the amount of depth uh, as automotive 2K clear. So they're the three main reasons why I use automotive 2K uh, paints. Now, today's video I'm going to go through everything from uh, cleaning the die cast body in preparation for primer. I'm going to go through primers, then I'm gonna go through solid colors, metallic colors, pearl colors, and even candy colors, and then we'll talk about clear coats over the top. Now, before we get into this uh, realm of 2K uh, paint colors, I wanna talk about uh, model cars and manufacturers in particular. So, what I've got here is an AutoArt Lamborghini Centenario. Now, this yellow pearl color um, is not really a pearl. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that is that when they make thousands and thousands of these models, it's not economical for them to paint them in the true uh, factory colors because uh, this particular pearl color would require three separate coats of paint after the undercoat or the primer. So what they do, they mix up a color that is very, very close uh, or, or as close as they can get it to the factory Lamborghini color and the yellow color, the metallic in the color and the gloss level is all in one paint. It's all in one tin of paint. So uh, it would still take a couple of light coats to paint this model, but there's only one tin of paint required to paint these model cars. And that's what you get with mass produced colors. So uh, although that might look pretty close to the genuine Lamborghini color, uh, when I actually open up a can of paint, a genuine automotive color, uh, it's quite different. It's not that close at all. Now, if we have a look at a high end resin model, uh, this particular one is made by MR Collection. This is a Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider. Uh, and this is a genuine Lamborghini color called Verde Selvins. Now, these models are actually painted in genuine automotive Lamborghini colors. Uh, and this is what equates to some of the much higher price with these models. Instead of them just trying to mix a color that is close and paint the model in one go, this is actually painted like a real car. So they would undercoat or prime the body then being that this is a pearl, there's three stages. So there is a base coat color, which would be a green. Then the second coat is a pearl coat over the top of that. And then the third coat is a gloss clear coat over it. So that is what they call a three stage pearl or uh, uh, like a Ferrari color, Giallo Tristrato. That means three layer. So the three layers with pearl is always a base coat color, a pearl coat, and then a gloss clear coat. So for those that always question why these models are so expensive, they're resin, they're sealed, nothing opens, why are they so expensive? 
Uh, I estimate that probably half the value of these models is due to the painting process. And being that I've paint a lot of models in automotive uh, 2K paints, it is a time consuming process. But the result is that you get exactly identical color to the real car. And that's why they paint these models in the genuine colors. All right, let's start with the with the start of the whole painting process, what I always do. So whether you strip your die cast model uh, of all its paint or you just sand down a resin model, the next step is always the same. I'll put some disposable gloves on and I always clean the bodies down with some wax and grease remover. Uh, that is an essential step to remove any of the contaminants, any of the oils, the oiliness from your skin, uh, that can cause issues later down the track with the painting process. So always clean your models down with wax and grease remover uh, before you even prime or undercoat the models. Now, let's talk about primer. Now there's two sorts of primer. There is a just a primer by itself and then what they call a surfacer. And now a primer is generally uh, has less solids in it, if that makes sense. So uh, a primer is just a thin coat uh, which will cover cover the metal or an existing base color coat of paint. So uh, primers will usually cover uh, everything and that's ready to paint straight over the top. Now a surfacer has a higher solid level in it, which means that uh, in say, auto body repair, uh, if you were repairing a dinted panel uh, and you put uh, a bit of body filler in there uh, and it had some very tiny sanding scratches in there, you would use a surfacer because it has a higher solid ratio in the primer itself. Uh, it will fill all those tiny little scratch uh, scratches uh, and then you can sand that primer surfacer back nice and smooth. Now it's not necessary to use a a full 2K surfacer on model cars. Um, not unless you have some serious scratches in your model car body, uh, or maybe you've made some over fenders out of Tamiya putty. Um, then the surfacer actually is quite good because it will fill those tiny little uh, scratches and you can sand, when that dries, you can sand the surfacer really smooth and then move forward with your painting process. Now primer basically comes in two colors. It comes in a white or it comes in a gray. Sometimes a light gray, sometimes a dark gray, um, but they're really your two basic colors for primer. Now most of the time I use white primer on all my models. Um, and the reason for that is coverage of your color coats. So you can imagine if I was painting a model car yellow, it would take less coats of yellow to cover the white if I used a gray primer, it would take more coats of yellow to cover the gray primer. So as a general rule of thumb, uh, most models that I paint, I will always use a white primer. Unless I'm painting a model in a dark color, like a dark gray uh, or a silver metallic or a black, then I'll simply use gray primer. But most of the time I will use a white primer. Now, the tin I've got here is quite a large tin. Um, it doesn't matter what manufacturer of automotive paints you use, uh, just always follow their mixing directions uh, on their tins. Um, it's not the same between every manufacturer, uh, but the results are basically the same with the products. So um, this is a, a HS surfacer. So HS stands for high solid. So I generally use this on most of the custom models where I've done a lot of uh, body work out of Tamiya um, putties and uh, lots of extensive sanding on the body where there might be uh, a lot of little fine scratches on there. I will use this product. Now this surfacer is actually a three to one mix ratio with uh, the hardener. So that means three parts primer surfacer and one part hardener. So that gives you an idea. Some manufacturers it might be slightly different. Um, but once that's mixed up with the hardener, uh, that's ready to sand in around 20 minutes to half an hour. It actually is really quick and it's designed for 
auto body repairs so that they, they can actually uh, move forward and work fast. So uh, that's a great product, but I'll give you a little tip. Uh, it's not essential to use a 2K primer or primer surfacer uh, if you wanna paint your model in 2K paints. You can actually use Tamiya primer surface. So they call it surface primer. Uh, it's basically just a primer by itself. So this is a white one and a gray one. Now I've used uh, this many times and I've actually painted 2K colors and clear coats straight over the top of the Tamiya primer. Now Tamiya primers are actually considered a synthetic acrylic, um, but I've had no adverse reactions at all uh, laying 2K base coat colors straight over the top of this and then finishing off with an automotive 2K clear coat. So uh, if you don't wanna spend the money on a 2K uh, primer or surfacer, you don't have to. You can simply use the Tamiya primer in the cans. It works just the same. So these aren't too expensive. These are around $15 each in Australia, but obviously you will get uh, a lot more models primed or undercoated buying bulk like this compared to these cans. So that is a little tip from me. Uh, I've done it on many, many models, so it does work. So uh, that is basically what I use for primers. Now, after the primer has dried, you need to sand that primer. Um, and what I use for that are these sanding sponges. So these are made by 3M. They're also available from your automotive paint supplier. Uh, and I use these two grades primarily. So uh, the, most of the time I use this one, which is only a 180 grit sandpaper. Now a lot of you might think, wow, that's too rough, but that is actually perfect for sanding down the primer. Uh, and then I'll just finish off with the next level, which is an ultra fine. And this is equivalent to around a 280 grit, uh, maybe not quite as smooth as a 320 grit. Um, but these, you can cut these into small sections. And because it's flexible, because it's a sponge, these are perfect for miniature cars to sand to follow all the, the curves on these models. Um, after you use these, you'll never go back to flat sandpaper. Uh, now I believe that Tamiya makes some span, sanding sponges as well, um, but these are quite cheap to buy from your automotive paint supplier. So uh, this is what I use to sand the primer before I start the painting process. Now before you move on to the painting process, uh, again I will use the wax and grease remover uh, and that will remove any of the sanding dust residue off the body uh, and I'll usually use my air compressor with an air gun as well, just to blow any of the dust off there, um, which will prevent any little bits of dust uh, underneath your paint finish. Now I've sprayed up a ton of different samples yesterday in the spray booth, all in varying stages, so I can completely explain and show you uh, the different layers of paint that are added. So let's have a look and talk about solid colors. Okay, so for the example of solid colors, uh, I've made up some samples here of Ferrari Rosso Corsa 322. So 322 is Ferrari's paint code for uh, Rosso Corsa. Um, now this is what they call a base coat. So uh, this is the ready-made color um, to match the manufacturer's specified ratio of uh, different pigments to make up the color. Now this is what your automotive paint supplier will make up for you. So this is the uh, base coat color and this requires to be thinned down with some 2K thinner. Now it is a 50-50 ratio, 50% of color and 50% of 2K thinner. That makes it sprayable through a spray gun or an airbrush. Now I've started with a white primer uh, to begin with, and this is two to three light coats of Rosso Corsa Red uh, sprayed straight over the top of white primer. So you can see there's no real gloss level to it. It has a bit of a sheen to it, 
um, but this is what a base coat color looks like when it's sprayed out so uh, it's only when you add the 2k gloss clear over the top uh, that you really get to see the shine of the color so um, let me just clean that a little bit um, this is the same sample as this but now with the clear gloss 2k over the top of it so uh, you can actually see my camera in there super super glossy uh, and that brings out uh, the real color of the Rosso Corsa red so um, that's pretty simple uh, for solid colors so it doesn't matter what you're spraying whether it's a solid yellow a solid black a solid blue uh, same theory uh, two to three light coats of base color over your primer uh, and then finish it off with some coats of 2k clear Okay, so now we'll go through and we'll talk about metallic colors. So let's have a look at metallic colors. Okay, so with metallics, metallics are very similar to the solid colors. So again, we have a color here. Uh, for example, I am using this uh, Lamborghini Mauve Metallic. Now this is actually the Lamborghini Diablo 30th anniversary uh, purple color so um, that's actually what the color is called mauve metallic now again this is a base coat color so this is the color that your automotive paint supplier will mix up exactly to Lamborghini specifications and this again is a 50 50 mix of color and 2k thinner so a little tin like this will go a really long way um, my paint supplier will mix up only a hundred mil uh, if I require uh, otherwise I'll just buy a can like this um, which is around uh, two, 200 mil 250 mil so uh, same applies started with a white primer uh, two to three light coats of the base coat over the white primer so you can see there you can see the metallic uh, fleck in that Lamborghini color uh, and Metallics really come to life when you apply the clear coat. So uh, this is the same sample uh, with a couple of coats of 2K clear. So you can really see uh, that it brings out the depth of the metallic and it makes it look like the metallic uh, flakes are floating inside the clear coat. So uh, really easy metallics to, to spray and uh, the result is pretty awesome as you can see what I'm talking about with the 2K clear gloss. Uh, you'll never get a gloss finish like that with uh, clears from model paint manufacturers. So uh, that is metallic finishes. Okay, next we'll talk about uh, pearl colors and these are my favorite colors to spray. Uh, a lot more coats as I previously mentioned to get the end result of pearl colors. Uh, but let's have a look at pearl colors. All right, so now we're gonna talk about pearls. So pearls are my favorite color to spray because you get so much life from the colors and there's some fantastic factory pearl colors. Now the example I'm going to use here is uh, Lamborghini Arancio Borealis Pearl. Now this is definitely my favorite uh, pearl orange Lamborghini color. And as I mentioned with pearls, it's actually a three stage process of a base coat, a pearl coat, and a clear coat. So what we're gonna do, again, I've started off just with a white primer finish. Uh, the base coat, again, it's the same as I mentioned. Uh, it is, this is the, the recommended color by Lamborghini to go underneath the pearl coat, and this is just a standard orange base coat. Now again, this is a 50-50 mix of this color base coat and 2K thinner that enables you to spray the color through your spray equipment. So here we have, this is just the basic orange base coat over the top of white primer. So again, not super glossy. Uh, it's got a little bit of a sheen to it, um, but this is the base or the ground color. Sometimes um, painters will call this a ground coat. This is the base color before you apply the pearl color. Now again, the pearl color, the Arancio Borealis Pearl from Lamborghini, 
uh, this is a base coat as well. So even though it is a pearl coat, uh, it still requires thinning. And again, this is a 50-50 mix of color and 2K thinner to enable you to spray it through your spray equipment. Now this is what it looks like with the Arancio Borealis Pearl base coat sprayed over, over the top of the orange base coat. So you can see uh, in some lights it looks a lot lighter and that is the light bouncing off the pearlescent flakes that are in the color. When I hold it like that, they look very similar, but when you start moving it around, you can really see how pearl paint works. So it's the light bounces off the pearl flakes that are sitting in there all at different angles, which gives you a really in-depth paint finish compared to metallic. Now this pearl, pearl layer on top of the base coat really comes to life when you add the clear coat. So this sample here has the clear coat added so it's exactly the same color, but just with a clear coat. But now you can see that the pearl flakes uh, looks like they're suspended in the clear coat. So uh, this is exactly how they paint the real cars. And this is the finish that you get when you have the gloss over the top of the Arancio Borealis. So um, that is one example of pearl, pearl 2K paints. So as I mentioned earlier, um, Ferrari's uh, color Giello Tristrato Pearl, uh, it works exactly the same way uh, as the Lamborghini colors. Although this time it's a yellow, so we're starting with a yellow base coat. So again, this is just a standard uh, yellow base coat, uh, which is what Ferrari recommends to go underneath the Giello Tristrato Pearl uh, and again I started off with a white primer uh, and this is just three light coats of yellow base coat. Again all yellow all these base coats are a 50-50 mix of the color and 2k thinner just so that you can spray it through your spray equipment. Now I've jumped a step here so this sample actually has the Giello Tristrato Pearl added to it and then the clear coat over the top of it as well. So uh, that is your Giello Tristrato. Now the sample I wanted to spray here, I wanted to explain pearls a little bit more. So uh, a, a base coat color is just solid. So it's just a solid yellow or a solid orange, whatever the base coat color is. It is solid, so uh, it's it's just it's made up all of different coloured pigment paints to make up that colour. Now, what pearls are? Uh, the the pearlescent flakes are actually held in what they call a binder. So there's like a a transparent um, quantity of paint in here, which is what they call a binder, uh, and then the pearlescent flakes are mixed in with the binder uh, and that makes it sprayable. So uh, what you see here on this sample, uh, this is, it's very pale, I'm not sure how you can see it, but this is the Giello Trist Tristrato Pearl sprayed straight over a white primer. So you can see how, how pale that is compared to the cleared sample. So that gives you an idea of how transparent uh, the pearl paints are, which is why they require uh, to go over a solid base coat color. So hopefully that explains uh, a little bit about pearl paints and gives you the understanding of uh, that it is a three, a three layer system with pearl paints on top of your primer or your undercoat. Okay, so now we'll move on to candy colors. So I've sprayed a couple of samples here, so let's have a look at candy colors. Okay, so now it's candy paints. So candies can be some of the hardest paint colors to paint, uh, and probably the hardest paint color to paint as a professional painter uh, is the color candy apple red. Now candy apple red is so transparent that you have to be really on your game when painting it um, so that 
you don't get any blotchiness or lines that you can see in the paintwork where your spray gun has passed. Um, I didn't have any candy red to, to make a sample, so uh, what I'm going to show you is a candy blue. Now candy colours uh, again are like pearls, so they use a base coat colour. Um, we'll get into this a bit more. This is a silver base coat. Uh, that's what it looks like there. It's just a silver metallic base coat. And then candies are very translucent, sometimes more than uh, pearl colours. And again, uh, candies are made up with a clear liquid called a binder. And then the candy colour, sometimes a dye, is mixed in with the binder, which is what enables you to spray it out and give coats on top of your base colour. Now, I've started again with a white primer. I've then applied three light coats of silver metallic over the top of it. Now this color is actually a Kawasaki motorbike color. It's called Candy Lightning Blue. Uh, and this is one of those colors that actually has some blue dye in it, which gives it its intensity of color. Now I'll jump a step here. Uh, this is the three light colors, uh, three light, light coats, I should say, of the Candy Blue on top of the silver base coat and then I've given it a couple of coats of clear over the top of it. So again, it's very similar to pearl. Um, you can really see the, uh, the flakes or the iridescent uh, look of the color underneath the clear coat. Uh, and that is basically the same painting process as a pearl. So it's a three stage. It's, it's a base coat, then it's the candy, then it's the clear coat. Now you've got a lot of options with candies. So this particular sample here is if you didn't want to use a silver base coat, you could use a white base coat. Uh, and this is the candy blue sprayed over a white base coat. So even though this is cleared, uh, you can see the color difference there. So you can see it's a much lighter blue uh, because the base coat is white, not silver. Now what custom car builders do uh, in the real automotive scene is you can play around with the base color with candy. So uh, a lot of custom painters can use anything from white to silver. You can even use gold as a base color uh, and you can even use black as a base color um, because it will change, because the candy is so transparent, whatever the base color is underneath will vary what the color is. So um, they do that with candy apple red sometimes. You can spray candy apple red over white, silver, uh, gold, black, um, even chameleon colors as well, and then spray the candies over the top. So candy colors have a myriad of options that you can uh, really mix and match different paint colors uh, and get some really wild results. Um, just bear in mind though that Candy colors are really transparent, so um, it's a good idea when you paint candies uh, to spray in both directions. So spray this way and then come back and spray that way, um, just so you don't, don't get any blotchiness or uneven or, or lines in your paintwork. So uh, not as important with pearl colors, but definitely with candy colors, uh, that is a good idea. So uh, I hope that explains candy colors. Um, not many people in the modeling world, I think, use candy colors. Um, they are quite expensive uh, and yeah, you'll get a very similar result with your pearl colors if you can find the exact color that you're after. Um, but that is basically the description of candies. Okay, so that is everything from solid colors through to candy colors. Now let's talk about the clear coat. So clear coat basically, uh, is what you need to finish off, as I've mentioned, uh, to get that real gloss finish to your models. Now, what I'm using is a uh, De Beer MS clear coat, which again, MS is for medium solid. Uh, so this gives a lot of depth to the clear coat. Um, and this is basically a two to one ratio with the hardener. So that is two parts clear coat, 
one part hardener. Um, and usually, depending on the weather conditions, add maybe five or 10% thinner on top of that. But again, just follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Uh, they always put the mixing ratios on the cans so you know how to mix it up. But that is how I get my uh, super glossy, super, uh, super deep looking clear coats on my models uh, is using the clear coats. Now, in a lot of my custom models, I actually like to have the decals underneath the clear coat as well. So uh, I'll usually, when I finish the, the solid or the metallic or pearl colors, uh, I'll usually give one or two light coats of clear coat uh, and then I'll let that dry. Then I'll apply all the decals uh, where I want them on the body and then I will put the model back in the paint booth and I will apply another two light coats of 2K clear coat over the de decals so that they are underneath. Uh, you never have any issues with peeling or fading when they are underneath the clear coat. So that is all of the products explained with 2K paints. As I say, it doesn't matter what brand you use, uh, just follow the mixing ratios. Uh, really the only products that you're mixing hardener in with is the primer or surfacer uh, and the clear coat. All the colors I showed you are all base coat colors from the solids to the metallics to the pearls to the candy. So uh, it keeps the amount of product down to a minimum, uh, but that hopefully explains to you guys in detail all about automotive 2K paints uh, and the different results you can get. So. Uh, I hope that's been informative. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Uh, I'll be sure to answer as many uh, questions as possible. Um, I've been a spray painter for many, many years, uh, automotive spray painter as well. So uh, I know these products inside and out uh, and they are just so far superior to model paints. Um, even whether you're just using a, an airbrush in a, a little airbrush station on your modeling bench, uh, I encourage you to really just give automotive 2K paints a go. Uh, you'll be like me, you'll never go back to model style paints again. But that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope it's been informative uh, and I hope that's uh, opened your eyes a little bit about the, the reasons why uh, some models from big manufacturers cost more than other ones do. Um, make sure you subscribe, make sure you smash that like button and thanks for watching. Rob's Model Cars.